for my guinea commune in the Virgin Islands. I went to school and I got a degree in intelligence and terrorism, and it ended up working on a very alternative brand, Red Bull. So my whole life has always been interested in how you create little revolutions, and how you create change, and how you do things in the non-traditional way. And one of the things that most influenced me working in Red Bull, and other people working in Red Bull, was the writing of this guy, Malcolm Gladwell. He wrote the book, The Tipping Point, where he talked about how change happens, how change agents make uh, revolutions, basically. And so he talked about the idea that, that change is pushed along until it just takes off by itself. And he said one of the biggest agents of change was this rule. It's called the rule of the few. He says it only takes about 20% of people to make the change happen. You don't need everyone. You need 20% of dedicated people who push and push and push. They do 80% of the work. But then eventually, the mass of people get behind it and start working on it. And he said there's three kinds of people in this 20% of people. He says there's connectors, people who know a lot of people and connect one person to another. There's maidens, people who have uh, information and skills and they want to help everyone else in the ecosystem. And there's salespeople, people who are very convincing, who can take ideas forward so that people take action with them. And all these people are very important in this ecosystem. So I would find this kind of interesting. And I want a tipping point for Puerto Rico. I want us to become this incredible <coughs> economy. I want us to become one of the best places in the world to live. I want our children to have the first world education that they deserve. And I think, I think we're getting there. Despite what you read in the news, despite what you see about the economy of Puerto Rico, I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close because in the last three years particularly, I've seen so many people who are joining this 20% movement. People who are doing incredible things and pushing and pushing and pushing to try and make this change happen. And as, as, kind of, as, part of this, uh, as part of this revolution, you would think this would be easy to do in Puerto Rico. A tipping point, we're a small island, we're so social, we all know each other. But you know what, it's not that easy in Puerto Rico. For some reason, Puerto Rico is like one island with a hundred islands in between. Everyone knows each other, but not everyone's talking to each other about what they're doing. We're kind of like spread out. What happens in one little subsection, the other people don't know about. And I see tons of missed opportunities all the time. I'm meeting people who they both share an idea, and they should know each other, but they don't, and I'm happy to connect them. I have a friend who took over an abandoned space near the UV, and he's rehabilitating it for the community. I know another friend who's also an artist who does the same thing and they don't know each other. Now sometimes it's not because people don't know each other. Let's be honest. Sometimes it is protagonismo. For every association in Puerto Rico, there's also a federation. Right? <laughs> Everyone wants to be in the spotlight. But, but despite this, despite that negative behavior, I think the missed opportunities are sometimes there because we don't connect people. Because we're not doing enough to get people to know each other. These petrakujas were an attempt to do that to connect different people. We've made great success in connecting people so that, they, so that they do better things because they have the support of other people. A good example of that is our friend Ricardo Burgos. He really believes in Puerto Rico becoming this creative economy and making money and making our economy off of it. Well, he gave a presentation here. That same night, we had invited uh, the Senator Ramon Luis Nieves. And now, the Senator has introduced a bill in Puerto Rico to support the creative economy of, uh, of, our, of our island. And that happened because that little connection, we were able to take two bright people and put them together. There's other people who are doing this in an incredible way. The people from antrocket.com have created a platform where creative people with great ideas can be matched online with other people who are willing to fund their ideas. And this is a crowdfunding platform developed here in Puerto Rico, and it's already funded several great projects. The people from Puerto Rico are young people who have gone off on great educations in the States, and so many of them are wanting to come home and do good. And they've been connecting people. They connected the, uh, this group of 5,000 scientists of Puerto Rico with the people who are creating the educational plan for Puerto Rico. The two didn't know each other, but that's what they're doing. And they're bringing some great ideas from the States and bringing them here and implementing them in Puerto Rico. Hey, Jack Parante. Some of you may have feelings about this, right? You think, ah, it was a concert, right? It was a song. But we know that though you don't hear it, these people are doing 
tons of things every day to connect people in Puerto Rico and to be the facilitators of change by grabbing one person and another person and saying, hey, work together. Right? There's also an organization called Paranda Punto Org, which is an organization that wants to reach out to the diaspora of Puerto Rico and says, you know what, we're not 4 million people here. We're like 9 million around the world. And if we can get all those Puerto Ricans around the world to dedicate some of their knowledge to improving this island, that is a good connection to have. So I think it's going to take a little bit more of a push in for, us, for us to get to that tipping point. And it's going to mean that all of us have to go beyond just hitting like on Facebook and say, ah, si, me gusta. We're going to have to do something. We're going to have to become the connectors, the mavens, and the salespeople and start helping people who are doing great things in Puerto Rico. I think we're also going to have to live by the San Contro principle as well. What is the second principle? It says that if you take people who would not otherwise be together, who have diverse skills, business people and artists, and put them together, kind of like San Cuatro, all these different things put together, you get better ideas and you get better results, right? So we need to start mixing these people up. And I think maybe we need to start finding ways to like recreate the plaza of Puerto Rico, right? This is not my idea, this comes from a guy called Giovanni who's a Puerto Rican who left here as a kid and now is a writer for Forbes and wrote about this. But we need to get people like they used to come to the plaza and meet each other all the time. We need to create a platform for people to express their ideas. Pencha are great, but let's take them even farther. Let's connect more people. My hero in all this is actually my wife. She's our chief button pusher. But she has, for the last two years, been going out, and whenever she sees a problem, she goes to the Department of Education and walks in on a meeting she's not invited to. She goes to the strike of all the bus uh, drivers and goes and interviews all of them. She goes to John and Torres and puts herself at the schools, on the board of the schools. I think it's we have to take action. If this tipping point is going to happen, we all have to take action. Don't just hit like on Facebook. This revolution is not going to happen on TV. It's not going to be a spectator sport. It's an active sport that every single one of us who want to live here and want it to be different, we're going to have to put the effort to do it. Thank you.